What is the strongest material you know? Hi, I'm Karen Hodgins, creator of Nifty Numbers Math Medley and Gelling with Geometry Family Math Night Kits. And in this video, I'm going to share with you my latest collaborative project, the graphene sheet. Now, I got the idea for this project when I was doing research for my last collaborative project, which was the soccer ball. And that's where I learned that the soccer ball is sometimes called a buckyball, um, named after Buckminster Fuller. Um, he's the guy who designed those geodesic domes. So a buckyball is a molecule and it's made up of exactly 60 carbon atoms um, arranged in the shape of a soccer ball. Um, and any time you have molecules made up of solely carbon atoms, um, things get pretty interesting. And that's what this is all about. So what I'm gonna do is describe um, how I did the project. It's um, actually very simple, but I have a few tips for you. And then I'm gonna get into the math and um, the science. Okay, so but before I can describe the project, you need to know what a graphene sheet is. So quite simply, um, a graphene sheet is um, made up, uh, it's a sheet made up of um, carbon um, atoms, and each one of these balls represents an atom. These um, here um, are the bonds. Um, it's, it's a um, sheet made up of carbon atoms um, in the um, form of a hexagonal lattice, and um, it's one atom thick. Now, because it's one atom thick, um, it's um, considered two-dimensional, so it has length and width. But I'm a math person, and anytime you say thick to me, I'm going to think length, width, and height. But uh, that's not the case here. This is the thinnest material um, known, and so it's considered um, two-dimensional. It's also the strongest material known. So if you answered diamond to my earlier question, um, you would have been right 10 years ago. But in 2004, um, two physicists at the, um, uh, uh, in, in uh, uh, Manchester <laughs> um, were doing an experiment. Actually, they discovered uh, purely by accident um, this new material called graphene. And, um, and they discovered some very, very cool and interesting and unique properties of graphene. And um, that's what we're gonna be talking about um, in just a little bit. Okay, so um, the uh, project, again, it's quite simple. Um, I needed to get a whole bunch of these little balls. And I wanted one inch balls. And first I started off with styrofoam. Okay, but the problem with styrofoam is that you can't color on that. So I needed something really smooth and I got these polystyrene balls and the cheapest place for me to, to, to buy them like in bulk meant that I had to buy them in packages like this. Okay, so they came, I got these at the discount school supply um, and it came with 40 of the one inch balls and um, 20 each of the two and the three inch balls, which I don't need for this particular project. Um, but I can guarantee you that you'll probably see these in a future collaborative project. Um, but there were 40 in each bag and I got a, a bunch of bags. I think I got 10, 12 um, different bags. I wanted to make sure that there were enough of these for us to, to um, do our project. And, um, okay, so you'll need those. Um, you're going to need um, a, a variety of colorful pens. And if you've seen my other videos, you know that I love Sharpies. You're going to need the um, templates Okay, to put the hexagons together. Um, and these and all of the other um, uh, table tents um, that I'm gonna talk about today um, can be found on our website, familymathlight.com under the resources section. Um, you'll also need um, toothpicks. Okay? And I got um, wooden colorful uh, toothpicks because you can see how beautiful it makes those bonds look when they're colored like that. Um, and you'll need some pencils. Okay, so um, what the table tents, I had uh, table tents around um, on the table, um, and this gave the directions to how to do the project. There's other things on here, and I'll get to that in just a little bit. Okay, but the directions basically say, choose one to six polystyrene balls, which are the carbon atoms, and use the pens to color them. 
Um, one to six um, polystyrene balls because um, if you're a kindergartner or a first grader, coloring six of these actually takes a long time. Um, and so I didn't want them to feel like they had to do um, six of them. So they could do as many as, as they want. Um, and then once they've colored it in, they would insert the toothpick. So let's say that they just did one. They would take this then and they would hand this to the station facilitator. I had two sixth graders running this station and then I had a, um, a student teacher um, putting together um, the graphene sheet. I'll talk about that in a second. Okay, so um, if they wanted to, to color in more, um, then they would, could put them together like this and then that's where these templates come in. Okay, so um, they could use the template and it can be kind of tricky. So it's nice to have mom or dad help them doing this. But then they use the template. You see how that works there? And then they just start organizing this and they could do as, put as many as they want to together because as far as they get, they're gonna hand this to um, the person who's putting together um, the graphene sheet. Now, a um, couple things about the graphene sheet. Um, I, um, when I was putting, when uh, my student teacher, when the student teacher was putting this together, um, it was working fine. Um, what happened was when I went to take it home uh, at the end of the evening, um, it fell apart on me. Um, and so I had to um, recreate it at home later. So what I, and what I did to make sure it didn't fall apart again is I, I hot glue gunned each one of these connections, every single one of them has hot glue gun on them um, and it's not going to fall apart um, now next time um, when I do this I'm going to have the hot glue gun on site and then that way it's taken care of there um, okay so then I mounted this um, on cardboard uh, cardboard is underneath here and I got the cardboard um, at an office supply store it's a um, display board you know that you use like in a science fair and then I covered it with this black um, uh, plastic uh, tablecloth um, that I got at the dollar store for a dollar and then when I put this the graphene sheet on it I glued there's probably about 20 um, balls that are actually glued to um, um, to the board um, to keep it up there so that's how I put that together it looks really really good especially with all those colors um, on there okay so that's the project again um, simple and now we're going to get into the um, the math and the, the science. Okay, so um, carbon comes in um, different forms, and scientists call those forms allotropes. So it comes in different allotropes, and one of those allotropes is diamond. We talked about that earlier. Um, um, and another allotrope or form is graphite. Now, if you're like me, you grew up calling this tip of this pencil here lead. It's actually not lead, it's actually graphite. Um, and um, graphite is made up of only carbon atoms. But what's super, super cool about um, these carbon atoms is that um, both diamond and graphite are made up of, of carbon atoms. It's in the arrangement of the atoms that makes them so unique. So graphite is actually made up of sheets of um, this graphene. So it's, it's made up in this hexagonal pattern like this, but there's hundreds of thousands, millions of sheets on top of each other. So that what happens is when you write with a pencil, Okay, um, uh, all these sheets are sliding off to create the writing um, on your paper. Um, diamonds, on the other hand, here is a, um, a basic um, set of molecules in, in um, the diamond, in a diamond. Now picture um, taking um, lots and lots of these and putting them all together. Can you imagine that that would make a very, very, very strong um, structure and it does it makes diamond right which is one of the strongest materials um, we know if you go back to middle school or high school when you're in science class and you learned about Mohs um, with a hardness scale okay so when you're trying to find out how hard um, different rocks are um, the scale goes from 1 to 10 1 is being super super soft and 10 is being super super hard so we know that diamond is a 10. Um, graphite 
ends up on the other end of the scale at 1.5. So you can see that that's super, super soft. And what I find totally cool and fascinating about this is that here you've got both ends of the continue, continuum or the scale made up of exactly the same thing, only the atoms are arranged differently. Totally cool. Okay, so another allotrope of carbon is something called fullerenes. Now, fullerenes is that buckyball that I talked about um, in the beginning because fullerenes are made up of um, a discrete number of carbon atoms. So the, the buckyball, <coughs> excuse me, the buckyball is also um, called C60 because it's made up of exactly 60 carbon atoms. There's a C540 and there's some other ones. And then there's also nanotubes, which are um, tubular. Um, like okay so now because of this discovery back in 2004 we have a fourth allotrope and that is graphene all right so let's talk about graphene because it's also described as the wonder material now what I did um, for the family Mount Hattie Mount last week was I had a, I created a banner um, that had um, that listed what graphene was and then the future uses of graphene. But because um, you may not want to do that, I created these, um, not these here, these are, I'll talk about these little cell phones in a second, but I created these table tents for you to use that has exactly what I had on my banner. Um, and then this way you don't have to create those. But basically here we go, it says, well, what is it? What is graphene, right? Graphene is a sheet of carbon atoms, we talked about that. It's the thinnest material known. It's only one atom thick. That's why it's considered two-dimensional. It's the strongest material known. It's 200 times stronger than steel. It's 40 times tougher than diamond. It's the most impermeable membrane known. So what that means is, is that um, the helium um, atom, helium gas atom, um, it's the smallest gas atom that we know of, um, cannot break through. Um, the graphene sheet, okay, um, which means that um, it's very, very dense. Um, it's transparent. It moves electrons 70 times faster than silicon, so think computers. It's the best thermal conductor known, and it can be stretched by 20 by 20% without any damage, so kind of like a rubber, right? So totally cool um, properties of graphene. Okay, so some of the future uses of this. Um, bendable computers and cell phones, and that's why I have this on here, because I thought it'd be kind of fun. I just got an image of cell phones and then I printed it out on uh, transparency paper, but I thought it'd be kind of fun to have these on the table so that kids could see that, hey, one day with graphene, I'll be able to fold up my cell phone and fold up my computer and stick it in my back pocket and take it with me. It's kind of neat. Um, longer lasting batteries, that's the one I'm waiting for. Um, super fast computers, lightweight cars, airplanes, and satellites. And why this one is important is because when things are lightweight, they're gonna take less fuel. So they're gonna leave less of a carbon footprint. I think that that's very cool. Um, DNA sequ sequencers, so um, they'll be able to um, figure out the order of the different proteins um, on the DNA strands. Protection from air loss, that comes from the, in, um, the impermeable membrane. So if you don't want things to rust, you can put this around it and uh, it won't. Um, and then it has a whole bunch of bio applications. And one of them that I have listed here is that um, one day they're thinking about grafting graphene onto our cells so that we can be able to monitor um, our body functions um, that way. So that's kind of cool and very exciting. Um, so you can see why then that graphene is called the wonder material. So what I wanted to do is to really impress this upon the students. So at the station, not only did we make the graphene sheet, we did three other experiments too, and those are on the, um, the table tent. Um, before I get to those, let me go down here to the questions. So in all of our kits, all of our stations are level beginning, intermediate, and advanced. And um, parents have um, some questions, um, some higher order thinking questions that can jumpstart conversations with their kids. So what I did here is I followed that. So the beginning here, it's how many toothpicks are needed to make the shape of a hexagon? So they can take some of these toothpicks with their parents and they can create um, hexagons and then they can count um, how many toothpicks or how many edges um, that uh, shape has. 
the intermediate level. Okay, so one ounce of graphene, okay, um, can cover 28 football fields, okay? So if you, you picture 28 um, football fields in your head, now, now picture it covered with graphene. If you swept all that graphene up into a little pile, um, one ounce, it's about, about roughly a cubic inch, okay? So that can cover 28 football fields. Then how many football fields can two ounces of graphene cover and how did you figure it out? So now they're talking about their strategies. And then the advanced, if it takes, and it does, three million layers of graphene sheets to reach a thickness of one millimeter, how many graphene sheets are needed for a thickness of one centimeter? Okay, how did you figure it out? So now they've got to figure out, well, how many millimeters are in a centimeter and then they've got to crunch um, some numbers. Okay, some good math stuff there. Okay, so now we get to the beginning, the, the middle of the table tent where the experiments happen. So you may or may not have these materials um, to do these experiments. So what I did for you is, um, again, on the resources where you can find these table tents, um, some of the table tents don't have all of these experiments on it. Um, again, because you may not have those materials, but you all will have pencils. So you all have at least one experiment to do. Um, and what I did is I created um, for my three experiments a little activity sheet looks like this okay and I'm just going to go over this with you because the first experiment simply says use a pencil and write your name in the box below your written name is made up of layers of graphite as they slide off the pencil tip so now write their name right there okay and then all of those sheets because remember remember it's it's 1.5 on the scale of hardness all those sheets are going to end up um, in written form and as their name. Okay, so experiment two. Experiment two says, touch the graphite plate, then look at your fingers. What you see are layers of carbon atoms or graphite. You may even have a sheet of graphene on your fingers. Okay, so what is that carbon, um, that or that graphite plate? Well, that's what this is here. Now, <clears throat> I got this um, online at the graphite store. And um, when, when they found out what I was doing, what's really cool about people is that, because I talked to a lot of people for this research, and when people found out um, what I was doing, it's amazing how super helpful they can be and how they give you some great discounts too. So I got this at a great discount. Um, but this is just basically um, graphite. It's the stuff that's in our pencils, right? And it's super, super messy. Okay, you get that all over your fingers. Um, but they're just touching it. Kids like to touch stuff. So they, they touch it and they look and they go, oh, all these graphite um, sheets on my, on my finger. And then um, I had hand wipes there so they could clean themselves up afterwards. Uh, you'll need a garbage can um, in easy access as well. So that's basically the second experiment, super simple. Now, the third experiment, mimics what those two physicists did way back in 2004 when they accidentally discovered graphene. So what happened was they were, they were working with um, graphene crystals and in order to make sure that there were no little particles on um, the, the graphite, they would, um, they would take scotch tape and they would just kind of take off all the little particles to make it a nice, clean um, uh, uh, graphite. One day they decided that they wanted, they were gonna play around with this and they were gonna see what it looked like under a microscope. So they put this um, scotch tape under a microscope and lo and behold, they discovered graphene. They discovered one single layer of the graphite which we now know, which they was named um, graphene. Um, and again, it was purely discovered by accident. So what we're gonna do here now is recreate that experiment. So you're going to need um, scotch tape for this. And I think I had five or six of these on the table. Um, I have to thank um, John um, Jazzack at the Michigan um, Technological University. Um, I talked to him as well, and he was super. He sent to me, can you see this here? He sent me for me um, a whole bunch of um, graphite flakes, and I put these on plates just like that. There's one on there, um, and this is what the kids used. Okay, so what's going to happen is, let me do it like this. Um, it says to um, take 
um, a piece of tape about 10 inches long. So now they're doing some little mental measuring, right? Um, and you could use a referent, by the way. They could go, well, this is eight and a half inches, so eh, I'm a little short. Um, in any case, so about 10 inches long. And the reason you want to do that is, um, well, you'll see in just a second. So you're going to take this um, graphite flake and you're going to put it about an inch down. Okay, you see that like that? Stick it on there. And then you're going to peel it off. You really like this. Now, look at what I'm left with, okay? Okay, because remember the graphite is in, is in sheets of this. It slides off super easy. So now I've got a whole bunch of graphite right there. So the reason I want it an inch down is because now I'm gonna hold this. I'm gonna fold this over. See me fold it over like that, but not all the way down. And then I'm going to pull it apart. So now I'm going to do it again. I am now just removing layer after layer. Ah, how cool is that? Kids have a lot of fun doing this. I'm having a lot of fun doing this. Okay, we'll do it again. But this is what, this is kind of what those guys did, um, the physicists back in 2004. Look at that, they keep doing that. Um, it actually, because uh, once they did this and they discovered all these unique properties of um, graphite, it won them the 2010 um, Nobel Prize in Chemistry. That is very, very cool. Um, so they just recreated that experiment. And what they can do is they can take this and just, here's the one that I did, and stick it at the bottom of their page like that. And then they get to take this home with them and share it with others. So, so for cool. So this generation of kids is um, going to grow up with all these exciting possibilities of graphene. And my guess is, is that's gonna change a lot of the way that we um, currently do things. And I wanted um, these kids to be introduced to um, graphene and maybe one day one of them will grow up to be a materials engineer. Uh, wouldn't that be exciting? Um, it was a very, very fun project, a really great and popular station, so if you do it, have fun.